What's up, everybody? This is Hidden Xperia here. Oi, 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 what's all this then? How'd you get into my no, house? No, 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 no! It's officially Halloween, the best season of the year, and also, if you ask me, the best time to talk about the flood. <laughs> Today's video is part one of the Halloween celebrations here on the channel. Now, in a few days time, I've got an absolute banger of an SCP video coming. But today, we're going to talk about something very special, very near and dear to my heart. The Halo Flood Horror Game. Now, I consider myself to be quite the connoisseur of zombies and their unique style of horror. In games, in movies, TV shows, comics, you name it. And so today, I thought it would be really fun to bring together all that knowledge. Knowledge. And use it to create the perfect, my dream flood horror game. So, to the surprise of absolutely none of you, this is a game that I've thought about a lot in great detail for a very, very long time. And so I know down to even some of the more minute details how I designed this game. First off, let's talk about gameplay because as per Bungie's legendary mantra, a game has to be fun before it's pretty. Now, there are really two ways that you can design a modern horror game. You either go down the kind of Outlast or Resident Evil 7 route, which focuses entirely on disarming the player and making the player as weak as possible as often as possible, which means that everything you encounter, every enemy, regardless of severity, is a threat and thus instills fear. But, you know, in the famous words of Eddie Smith, Halo 2 is about guns and low guns. <laughs> That's what it's about. So as down as I would be for a mostly or entirely disarmed Halo game where the focus is purely on survival over killing and action, I think the better way to take a survival horror game within the confines of Halo is to go the kind of Resident Evil 4 slash Dead Space route for the gameplay. Over the shoulder, or I guess it could even be first person, with that formula's perfect balance of horror, action, and progression would suit Halo extremely well. Man, I'd love to see Halo's take on the merchant. Maybe like a mysterious disgruntled ODST or a, I don't know, a rebellious arms dealer elite or something like that, man. So much potential. But the main element of a horror game or any horror experience is, of course, the horror. It's in the name. And if you ask me, the two best and most effective styles of horror that actually are coincidentally very well suited to Halo's universe are Fear of the Unknown and Relatability. Fear of the unknown is the most primal kind of fear. We humans are an arrogant species. We always think we know more than we actually do about anything, regardless of how novel it is. So as soon as we encounter something that we don't understand, that simple lack of comprehension is more than enough to strike fear into our hearts. And then relatability is what drives that fear home. If you can't find common ground with a horror story, then it's not going to impact you the same way because it feels like there's kind of like a barrier between you and the horror. But as soon as you remove that barrier and make a story that is in some way relatable, it is a hundred times more terrifying because it feels like it could actually be real. I mean, if you want a good example of this, look no further than 28 Days Later. Considered by many to be the scariest movie ever created, 28 Days Later nails the relatability aspect of horror. It's one of the main reasons it's so scary in the first place. Now, speaking personally, growing up, I'd seen Night of the Living Dead, I'd seen Dawn of the Dead, I'd seen the Resident Evil movies, but they all seemed way too fictional. They were set in faraway countries or very obviously fate settings. 28 Days Later being set in London, however, somewhere that I visited frequently and even at a young age knew well enough to recognise certain landmarks or areas that I'd actually been to, made the rage virus outbreak and its subsequent apocalypse and fall of man so much more real. Yeah, the purposefully amateur, low quality style of filming definitely helped make it feel more grounded and visceral, but because the movie was hingent on so many things that I could personally relate to in real life, its story felt like it was actually happening in the real world, where the rules of fiction and Hollywood didn't apply. That barrier had been broken down. So, today's video about my very own Flood game just so happens to be sponsored by my very own Flood gaming PCs. 
made in partnership with Apex Gaming PCs. All three of my builds, the Pure Form, the Grave Mind, and the Primordial, are now available on Finance Purchase, so you can buy your iconic Primordial tier powerful PC now and pay later with Brad. Hit the link in the description and make sure to use code HIDDEN at checkout for up to 250 bucks off your order. So, with that said, I'd split this game into two very distinctive and very clearly themed halves. Because these two types of horror technically invalidate each other, I mean, if something's relatable then there's nothing unknown about it for you to fear, the opening half of the game would focus entirely on fear of the unknown, and then the second half of the game would focus on relatability. Now, Fear of the Unknown is already rife in Halo's universe. It's a core part of the mystery that is the bedrock of the franchise. And if you ask me, the greatest source of Fear of the Unknown in Halo are vast, incomprehensible foreign structures. For as much awe as they gave me in Combat Evolved, they gave me an equal dose of Fear of the Unknown. What's beyond the fog? How deep do these facilities go? So, I'd have the setting of the first half of the game be in a vast, sprawling foreigner facility that descends deep beneath the surface of whatever planet it's on, packed full of vast caverns and claustrophobic corridors, likely some kind of flood containment facility. Now, as you all know, I've also always loved the kind of clandestine elements of Halo's lore, the stuff that, like, the UNSC and ONI get up to behind closed doors that's highly classified and covered in black ink, and I really think those kind of story beats would fit perfectly in a flood horror game. One of my favourite bits of Halo lore is Oni taking command of the prison ship, the Mona Lisa, and conducting experiments on its inmates with the Flood, and I think a plot like that would be absolutely perfect for this kind of game. Deep beneath the surface of a distant world, the Office of Naval Intelligence conduct their most clandestine research yet. Repurposing an ancient foreigner containment facility as a laboratory, they experiment with the Flood on those they deem worthy of disappearing. But of course, as with all government experiments, things don't exactly go as planned. The flood that they thought they had under control, break containment, and the research lab slash containment facility is engulfed in an outbreak. The facility's automated containment protocols kick in, sealing all exits to the surface and trapping all within the facility beneath the ground. But because of Oni's tampering of the defences, the Sentinels and all other defences are offline. And so, as one of the few Oni ODST hazmat guards, you have to get the defences back online, try to survive, and stop the outbreak. Fear of the Unknown would get worse and worse as you descended deeper into the facility, with the lower levels suffering more extreme power failures like those that were described in Point of Light as a result of Oni's meddling, which in turn results in the outbreak festering more and more down there. Darkness, poor visibility, thick flood fog, and flood screams echoing throughout the corridors, their origins impossible to pinpoint, and the occasional broken sentinel twitching in a corner. You could do so much with the setting and plot of this game to instill an immense sense of dread. The fear doesn't have to just come from the flood either. To a Spartan, sentinels aren't that much, but to a regular sized human, these things would be terrifying, especially given how hostile they are to any target during an outbreak. Not just the flood, but it's food as well. Now, regular sentinels could be pretty creepy, but imagine an enforcer patrolling a darkly lit, foggy cavern. That bad boy would instill pure dread. As you descend through the research lab, you'd go from a simple ignorant security officer just doing his job, to discovering what it was Oni were doing down here that you were protecting them doing, what and who they were conducting experiments on, and their motives, all while trying to stop the outbreak. You know, I always loved the idea of Oni almost going like stereotypical supervillain and trying to turn the Flood into a bioweapon of their own control. I feel like it's almost inevitable that that happens again after the Mona Lisa. And seeing firsthand their work trying to splice together human and Flood DNA would be just a prime horror experience. It had also opened the door to a ton of new Flood-styled enemies to fight. Enemy progression is one of the most important aspects of a survival horror game. As the player upgrades their arsenal, the enemies of course have to scale with those upgrades to ensure that they remain a threat and thus can still instill fear. And with a game set in an experimental ancient flood research lab, the potential for new flood and sentinel enemies to play into this enemy progression is limitless. I'm gonna say this a lot, but I can't believe this has never 
happened in an official form yet. Of course, you'd start off just fighting infection forms and maybe the odd combat form here and there, but the deeper into the facility that you descend, the more horrors you encounter. Test subjects, human, elite, and profit prisoners of Midnight Facility, repurposed for experiments, infected scientists, infected only agents, failed experiments that instill pure John Carpenter body horror, pure forms that have broken their 100,000 year old containment tanks, and also the facility's hostile sentinel defenses. So much potential. However, your attempts at quelling the outbreak in the facility would ultimately fail. Despite fighting off hordes of undead and twisted biological machinations, the outbreak would be too much for just one ODST to handle, and despite all efforts, would break through the lab's automated lockdowns and reach the surface, hijacking only ships and actually making it off this distant world. And it's here where the second act of the game that focuses on relatability would begin. The only research facility is overrun, their prowlers commandeered by the parasite ready to spread off world and begin their galactic consumption. So where do they go? Well, the obvious answer of course is Earth. I mean, it doesn't get any more relatable to us than Earth because I don't know about you guys, but I've not been to Mars yet. But as much as I'd love to have the flood invade, I don't know, Paris or New York or something like that, it's a pretty big leap for the Flood to suddenly just go from some random distant planet to Earth, humanity's homeworld. I mean, that was a major plot point in the original trilogy that had a ton of build-up to it. I feel like if it just basically happened overnight in this story, it might feel a little bit cheap and it might invalidate the original trilogy story a little bit. Also, canonically, it wouldn't make any sense because how would a massive infected ship just casually get to Earth, right? It'd be detected, it'd be shot down, it'd be destroyed, it wouldn't even get close. So, instead of Earth, I'd have the flood spread to a nearby colony that has heavy ties to Earth. I like the idea of the colony that succumbs to the Flood being one of the first outer colonies that was ever established by humanity, by a colonization team of just Earth inhabitants who wanted to almost recreate Earth as it was prior to the UEG's creation, even down to like the architectural style and location names. It's basically a cheese way of having the relatable aspects of the Flood invading Earth without actually having the Flood invade Earth and damage the overall narrative of not just this game, but Halo overall. Have the planet be called like, I don't know, New Earth or something like that. Basically a planet set up by people who like the rest of the insurrectionists, don't like the UEG, didn't like their formation, and want to basically recreate Earth as they loved it, just without the UEG. But the point of this second act isn't the location itself, but rather that the location feels familiar enough and relatable enough to break down that barrier between the fiction and our real world. Just like 28 Days Later did, transitioning the horror from somewhere that's entirely fictionalized and far off to somewhere that we the players have at least some degree of association with in the real world to bring the horror home, so to speak. Now, given that, like we've said, you couldn't just have the Flood invade Earth in this because it'd just seem a little bit cheap, you'd have to make this colony that they invade feel as similar to kind of like a specific part of Earth as possible, which is done through elements of the design, like architecture, colour palettes, landmarks, names, yada yada. Now, I might be a little bit biased here, but I really like the idea of this colony trying to almost like rebuild London and call it New London and have that be the location that the Flood land and start to spread. Of course, I'm massively biased. You could have it be any major city. I mean, like I said, Paris would be really cool, New York would be really cool, LA, Tokyo, but call me biased, I think it'd be cool to have it be like New London. Anyway, the Flood would eventually reach this new colony and crash their ships in, let's just say for the sake of this video, New London. Because this world is an outer colony world, there'd be no major defences like MAC stations or UNSC ships to defend it. They're entirely on their own, that's the point of the colony, so the Flood could theoretically make landfall with ease. Once on the ground, the flood would spread like wildfire, transforming New London into a parasitic post-apocalyptic hellhole within minutes. Civilians would be absolutely helpless as they tried to flee the alien horror. The URF defences would be overrun instantly. Basically, I'd want the city to turn into an empty, infested urban sprawl. Very similar to how London is presented in 28 Days Later for it to invoke a feeling of almost uncanny valley because it looks like London, but it's totally devoid of people. I really want the city to feel as though humans had just decided to up and leave it overnight as if they'd just vanished like that and had been replaced by something sickly and something really unnerving. 
Now, I'm not sure if I've made this apparent yet, but as much as I'd love this game to have a really, really, really good story, the main focus to me with a horror experience would be on crafting a perfect atmosphere over everything else. When it comes to a horror experience, atmosphere is hands down the most important thing. I mean, it doesn't matter how good its story is, if its atmosphere isn't convincingly unnerving and creepy, then it's just not good horror. At the end of the day, atmosphere is what immerses you in a world. It's what breaks down that barrier between the fiction and reality. Anyways, after following the parasite to the colony and making your way to New London, you spend some time going through sections of the city in various stages of infection. Think a gameplay combination of like Halo 2 and ODST's Mombasa sections mixed in with the sprawl in Dead Space 2 as the necromorphs are taking over it. Heavily urban environments with recreated landmarks and reused architecture from the London that we know of to help with the relatability. You briefly link up with stragglers from the URF who are so terrified by the parasite that they don't even clock the Oni symbols on your ODST armor, but these stragglers are very quickly picked off and infected. As you move through the city, through the streets, ascending up tower blocks, crossing between skyscrapers on sky bridges, and moving through subway tunnels, you can see in real time the infection spreading and beginning to consume the city. Biomass starts appearing near large piles of bodies in street corners. All plants and vegetation start to fade as the area is turned into a blightland and there are flood wails echoing throughout the streets. New London has been entirely consumed. The only option left is to nuke the city. The insurrectionists have a history of conducting terror attacks with nuclear weapons, so luckily there are some stored in one of New London's military bases, which of course is going to be your final destination. Working your way through the city streets, illuminating your way through the now dense spore-rich flood fog with your helmet's flashlight, you reach the base, fighting through hordes of infected, armed insurrectionists, kind of similar to Resident Evil 4's island section where all of a sudden the Canados have guns, before delving deep into the base's warehouses to retrieve the nukes. With how much the flood have consumed in the city, they've already started forming several proto-grave mines, making the combat forms and pure forms that broke containment in the lab noticeably more intelligent. Operating machinery, using guns, maybe even using vehicles as well. And it turns out that one of these proto-grave mines is in the base that houses the nukes. After coming face to face with the proto-grave mine in the base, in all of its disgusting, disturbing glory, you prime the warheads and make a mad dash to the hermetically sealed bunker to survive the blast which you just manage to do as the nuke goes off. Kind of similar to Combat Evolve's ending, the game ends with the ODST staring at view screens of the surface in the bunker, as the mushroom clouds start to rise and the flood are eviscerated. Everything in the outbreak zone, including any humans still trying to survive, is annihilated and New London is leveled. Then it all dawns on you that this entire outbreak wasn't caused by the Covenant or simple stupidity, but it was born from the malice of Oni, who wanted to weaponize it. I think that'd be the ultimate kicker to kind of summarize both the horror and also clandestine elements of the game's story and atmosphere. That this entire outbreak and the subsequent extreme loss of life was solely the doing of humans, tampering with things that we don't understand for malicious purposes. You know, I feel like it's only a matter of time until Oni try a repeat of the whole Mona Lisa incident, but you know, this time I want to experience the consequences of them doing that firsthand in a game. Yeah, I know that it's like almost cliche at this point for some big evil government agency to experiment with something like the flood and cause an outbreak that wipes out the planet or wipes out whatever, just like in 28 Days Later and just like in Resident Evil and all these other fictional universes. But you know what? Cliche or not, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't work so well within the confines of Halo's universe. And damn it, man, it really would do. But that's pretty much it. How I design the hypothetical Halo Flood horror game. I'd have it use a combination of like Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space's gameplay loop, and then I'd have the story start off in an only repatriated flood containment facility that's deep underground, but that suffers a catastrophic outbreak that, despite all efforts to contain, manages to make it to the surface and spread to a very familiar feeling nearby human colony and consume an entire city. Not a serious video today, but you know what? I thought it'd just be fun in the spirit of Halloween to to put pen to paper and try and design like the outline of a game that I think we all 
want to see so much and have done for a very, very long time. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on a flood horror game. Like, do you like my idea or would you rather it be set somewhere else? I mean, God, there's so many different potential settings for a Halo flood horror game. You can have it in the Voy exclusion zone. You can have it in high charity as the outbreak goes on. You can have it in a different flood research facility. I mean, th there are billions of potential settings and ideas for this game. I cannot believe it's never been made. You know what, 343, if you're watching this video, please, for the love of God, make this game. I can't believe you haven't done so yet, but we're in the age of revived survival horror. If you don't make it now, then, man, I, I don't know what to say. I am simply, I, the words cannot be formulated. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> so, with that said, let's round out this uh, incredibly hypothetical but um, hopefully not so hypothetical in the future video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching once again. I really hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you all in the next one.